I'm not totally sure how this video is going to go. I think based on the subject line, I'm sure you guys know that this can be an emotional subject, and I definitely know for me it is. For me, I'm being super vulnerable talking about, or not even really <laughs> talking about my experience, but just talking about this subject because it is so close to me and so personal. So yeah, so I have some notes that I'm going to try and stick to because I don't want this to be a super long video. Certainly there can be another video if this is something that interests you guys or you can relate to, but I'm going to try and keep this pretty concise today and I don't really feel like I'm at the stage where I want to talk about everything that I have gone through. I just don't feel like I'm entirely able to talk about it without getting super emotional. And I don't want to get super emotional right now because I feel like it is a sunny day outside and I don't want to be put in that mindset. However, this is also something that I feel super passionate about and something that I really hope will help someone who is in a similar position to me or will help someone understand someone who's in a similar position to me. So with that being said, we are talking about chronic pain today, which is something I mentioned um, a while ago on Instagram, whether or not you guys would be interested in talking about it. And a lot of you said yes. So I wanted to make this video. I've been wanting to make it for a while. It's just like mustering up the courage to do it and be vulnerable. I have my trusty cup of tea. It's <laughs> comforting and a nice candle that you guys can't see that's lit just to kind of soothe my nerves because it is something that I have a lot of trouble talking to even like my very closest friends or family about just because um, I like to be positive. I like to look on the positive side of life and this is something that has been super difficult in my life and I don't want to say negative because I've been able to find the positives in it, um, but it has been super challenging for me. So I am 22 years old, uh, I'll be 23 in June, but when I was 20 I was in an accident and I suffer from chronic back pain since then. So I think when you go through something like that or you suffer from chronic pain, um, you grow up really quickly and you make a lot of different life choices than you probably would have made otherwise. One thing that was positive out of it is I actually started this YouTube channel because I was currently in college at the time and had to take um, almost a whole year off and I was really lonely and I was living back at home but both my parents work so I was alone a lot and I felt like I couldn't really connect with anyone and being able to hop on camera and make videos was kind of a way that I was able to reach out to the outside world even though physically I couldn't like already getting emotional talking about this. I think it's gonna be super hard to edit this video. So hopefully it's actually gonna go up. <laughs> so I've been on this sort of journey of coming to terms with chronic pain for about two and a half years now. So it's been a while. I feel like I've lived like so many lives in such a short period of time, but I think sometimes that's just what happens when your health is sort of like up and down and you have good days you have bad days it just feels like a lifetime since before but what i really want to share with you guys today and what i think i can get through without being super emotional is talking a little bit about three tips that i have for anyone who is dealing with chronic pain for anyone who has a friend who is dealing with chronic pain or really if you're just going through a hard point in your life i think these tips would be really helpful you can like hear it in my voice how nervous i am usually i'm like so confident to talk to you but Today I feel like my voice is like so froggy, it's like going up and down, but that is because, like I said, I don't talk about this a lot, I don't talk about this with a lot of people, um, I don't know why I'm like that, but I just prefer to keep like my struggles to myself, which I'm not saying that's healthy at all, um, but that's just something that I do and I'm trying to be more vulnerable with it because I think that that can be super healing and this is an interesting first step in doing that. The first tip that I want to talk about today and it's something that I really battled with for a long time um, was being present. So I think when you're dealing with some sort of chronic illness, when you're dealing with some sort of chronic pain, 
You can get in this mode where you feel so hopeless thinking about the future and thinking about like, are you gonna live with this forever? Is this how you're gonna feel forever? And it's so hard to just look at a day moment by moment and not like what the rest of your lifetime is gonna be. Although I personally always remain hopeful that one day I will wake up without any pain, I also have really challenged myself to deal with the in-between times. You know, whenever you're diagnosed with something, whenever you have an injury, there's a point in time where you truly can't do anything but wallow and feel like, you know, all you can think about is the pain. All you can think about is whatever you're going through. I think as you start down your road to whatever recovery looks like for you or partial recovery, I think it's really important to start bringing your awareness to other aspects of your life. So something that really helped me in doing this is I actually signed up for a mindfulness-based stress reduction class. I believe that's what it's called. This was a recommendation for me just because it's all about training your mind to not focus so much on the pain and to be able to focus on other parts of your life and just your body in general. So for me, I had really acute pain in my back um, that sometimes would turn into sciatica, but often it was just kind of like radiating through my back. And if any of you have had a backache, then you know when your back hurts, it's like your whole body hurts and it's just horrendous. But something that I learned in this class was that my mind is such a strong tool and that by kind of doing meditation, um, really fine tuning that tool, I am able to take my attention and awareness away from the part of my body that hurts the most and channel it into another part of my body. And this doesn't get rid of the pain at all. That's, it's not a cure for the pain, it's not a cure for the injury. But what it does is it allows you to start to distance yourself from whatever you're feeling and begin to notice other things that are going on. So I practice something called a body scan, which if any of you do MBS are, and mindfulness-based stress reduction, MBSR, yes. If any of you do MBSR, then you are probably familiar with this. It's a specific type of meditation, and what it is is it's starting at the very bottom of your body, so your feet, your toes, and working your way up and checking in with all parts of your body. And by doing this regularly, I've been able to kind of turn it on and off when I need to. So for instance, um, people would ask like, hey, do you wanna go out to dinner? And whenever you're in pain or you're really not feeling well, it can be super hard to muster up not only the energy, but also just to like sit and be present and listening to what the other person is saying when you are so uncomfortable. Um, but something that I would do is I would kind of turn on that body scan and as someone was talking to me and I would feel my back starting to kick in, I would be able to say, okay, well, yes, I feel my back, but what's going on in my toes? And I would be able to kind of shift the awareness away. And that way it wasn't like I was just sitting there saying like, oh my God, my back hurts so bad. I cannot have dinner with you. Oh my God, oh my God. When is this gonna be over? So that's something that super helped me and that has to do with being present and really being like mindful of other parts of your body. And I think that translates really well into being mindful in other parts of your life. This also sort of ties into my last tip. So we'll kind of come back to this idea of being present. My next tip is to get outside and try and be active in some sort of way. So for me, it was a physical injury, so being active at the beginning stages was very hard, but I started to do physical therapy pretty much immediately, and as I was getting progressively better with physical therapy, I was able to do like walks outside. And obviously this is a really slow process and it's something that you have to be very patient with and it's something that you need that awareness of your body to know like, okay, I can push myself a little bit further today. I can walk two blocks instead of one or you know what, I am just not feeling okay today. I just need to rest. So you need that first step of being aware of what's going on in your body in order to kind of do the second step. But being active is something that I mean, I hated exercise, I hated sports, I'm not a competitive person, so you know, the idea of being on a team and being competitive with someone was really tough for me. I never really liked sports, I was always kind of a couch potato, like I preferred to be cozy and like nested in my house and have people over and that sort of thing. So after I was injured, I think the transition to learning that you, you know, I need to really work every single day 
um, to keep my body in shape, to keep myself strong. I remember when I first started physical therapy, they told me, you know what, this is gonna be a blessing and a curse for you because you're gonna have to live your whole life with this injury. However, you will always be really strong as long as you take care of yourself. And being strong is something that now I take super seriously. Um, you guys see my posts about Pilates and I always think it's interesting because when you're looking at someone's Instagram, it might be like, oh, Pilates is such a trendy thing. Like, that's probably why she's doing it. Or, you know, she wants to stay in shape. And yes, I do want to stay in shape, but there's sort of this larger context that no one gets to see online, no one gets to see on your phone of like why we're doing the things we do. And for me, why I do Pilates is because of my body and my back and my injury and my pain. Um, Pilates is something that I found way later down the road because I need to go through extensive physical therapy before I could actually even consider doing something like that. But at the recommendation of my physical therapist, I found Pilates um, and it has just been super life-changing for me. If anyone has a back injury, I know I'm not a doctor, but I highly recommend it. Um, I think anytime you have an injury, you lose a lot of confidence in your body and you lose the ability to say, can I do this? Can I not do this? And Pilates has been so eye-opening to me in terms of even how far I've come, um, how far I have to go, and just learning different ways that I still can move my body even if it's not the same as before the injury. So I recommend Pilates to everyone because I think it like is a cure-all. But like I said, I'm not a medical professional. I can't tell you what to do. But I think it's a really gentle exercise and I think it's something that can be really helpful um, in just bringing awareness back to your body. And I think it's really helpful in keeping you strong. And especially if you have a back injury, keeping your core really strong is so important. Like even when I'm sitting right now, you guys can't see, but I'm really using my core to hold me up and that way it takes a lot of pressure off of my back. So moral of the story, trying to find something that works for you is really important. So this could be a variety of things. It doesn't have to be anything intense. It doesn't have to be Pilates. It could be yoga. It could be meditation. It could be just sitting outside if that's available to you. I mean, I cannot tell you how much sunshine can affect your mood and just being able to sit out in it and absorb some vitamin D can sometimes be the best cure and I know that the instinct when you're not feeling well is to not do anything and there are certainly days where that's exactly what you should be doing but then there are also days where you need to kind of pick yourself up by the bootstraps and say nope like I know I'm feeling crummy today but I also know that a walk around the block would feel really good or sitting out in the sunshine would feel really good and just getting that sort of outdoor time and trying to move your body how you can and it's just something that I have found helps immensely in my journey with chronic pain. So I saved the hardest one for me to talk about for last. Um, and this is one that I still really struggle with to this day. So simply said, the last tip that I have is finding a balance between perspective and validation. I think maybe it's easiest to understand this point, like relating it back to my own personal experience. So it's been two and a half years now that I've had this pain. And I think about where I started and I think about how like I couldn't walk <laughs> basically when I first injured myself. And I think about now and I think about all the things that I've done. This is where it's hard not to get emotional. And I feel very proud and I feel also very discouraged because obviously two and a half years of having you know, the same injury, the same aches and pains when you wake up gets very old very fast. I think everyone can relate to that or at least understand that comment. So where perspective comes in is knowing that I've gotten better since those days where I could barely walk. But where validation comes in is knowing that what I'm going through is really challenging for me and um, very personal to me and it's okay if it makes me feel upset sometimes. I think whenever you're dealing with some sort of chronic pain or illness, there are days where you just feel totally hopeless and you feel like, why me? <laughs> this is the worst thing in the world. Um, I could just go down a list of these like why, why, why questions. And I think it's okay to have days like that. And I think sometimes I beat myself up over that. Like, you know, my gosh, like I can walk. My gosh, I have a supportive family who is able to help me with medical costs. And I was able to get the best medical care. And, and I kind of, I feel guilty for feeling so awful. 
And I think something that has stuck with me ever since I was first injured is something that Jared actually told me. I knew this video was going to be hard, but I didn't think it would be this hard. What I was saying was, so one thing that really stuck with me throughout this whole process that Jared told me very early on because, because like I was saying, I, I would really struggle with the fact that I know that there are so many parts of my life that I'm so lucky for and, and I'm not sure why but I view those down days as sort of a sign of weakness or you know that I wasn't doing enough to stay positive or to be hopeful or whatever or that I you know didn't have enough perspective like my gosh like I said someone who doesn't have understanding people someone who doesn't have a flexible schedule that you know allowed me to rest a lot and I was in college so taking time off of college is obviously very different than if you're working full time and you need to take time off. And so I would kind of battle with myself over the fact like you know Caroline be strong like why are you so upset and something that he told me was that it's absolutely okay to feel discouraged some days and that you know, it doesn't mean you don't have perspective. What it means is that this is the worst that you know it. And that's different than the worst someone else knows, but just because like your worst might feel worse to you doesn't mean someone else's worst isn't. So he, in that statement, really taught me the importance of being able to validate what you're feeling and to know that you know, when you're at your lowest, that is truly your lowest. And no matter what anyone says to you, like, own it. Just know that, you know, that's your truth. And like, your struggle, although it sounds so dumb, your struggle is real. <laughs> and, you know, yes, it's so important to have perspective. And yes, it's so important to know most days that things could be worse. And that's often something I come back to that keeps me moving forward and it's such a motivational thing to have perspective. But on those days where you just can't and you're feeling really hopeless, that's okay. You know, let yourself have those days every once in a while because it is a long process and it's something that you have to learn to be so patient with. And if you're constantly beating yourself up and you're constantly telling yourself, don't feel upset, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. You kind of push back all this really important validation that if you don't have, then you, in my opinion, truly can't heal and truly can't grasp, you know, the experience that you're really going through. So I'm sure you guys can tell why I don't talk about this with a lot of people because it's so hard not to get emotional. It's such a tricky topic and it's something that I'm sure if you looked at my YouTube page, if you looked at my Instagram, you would never guess that it's something that I battle with. But that is the beautiful power of editing, you know. You don't see that I sit with a pillow behind my back and that I'm using my core like crazy and that, you know, every half hour of filming, if that's that long of a video, I get up, I stretch, I move around, I need to take a break, and then I come back. You know, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes of people's lives, and I think it's just one of those reminders of why it's so important to be kind to everyone you meet, because you just never know what they're going through. Because I'm sure I rambled on at a lot of things, I just want to make the three points super clear because I think they are something that have been so helpful um, in my journey and are things that I continually think about and continually try and work towards. So the first one is being present and finding a way to be present and aware of what's going on with you in one moment, not the rest of your life. The second is to try and find a way to get out and be active. It doesn't have to be exercise. It could be sitting out in the sunshine. Being in a different environment is really important because if you just stare at a ceiling all day, it is miserable <laughs> and, and no one can heal that way. You know, being out in nature is really important and there have been plenty of studies that show that I don't need to tell you. You can look them up yourself. Trying to be active when you can um, and just keeping your body moving and trying to find the ability to build strength so that hopefully moving forward you will be able to expand your life and keep living the way that you can live best. And the third is to find the right balance of perspective and validations. So know that having perspective is important and can be a really strong motivating force in your life and can keep you moving forward. 
but also validate those feelings of feeling discouraged, of having a mopey day, of feeling sorry for yourself. It's not selfish and it needs to happen because I think it ultimately leads you to a better understanding of what you personally need and allows you to not minimize what you're feeling. Um, and I think by doing so, you understand more how you can ask for help, what you need in your life, what you can do moving forward. I just feel like it's such an important step and I feel like so many people, myself included, struggle with it and struggle with understanding that it's not being weak and it's not giving up. It's just being kind of in tune with how you're feeling and being able to share that and be vulnerable, talk to someone, um, ask for help. I think that's something that's so, so important and I feel super lucky to everyone who has helped me along my journey. In fact, some of you are probably watching and I'm sure you know who you are, so thank you so much. I yeah, I just can't thank you enough. So hopefully on Friday we will have a happier video. Um, like I said, this is a super emotional topic for me. It is super hard for me to be vulnerable and yeah, just talking about it is not quite cathartic yet because I get so upset. Um, but it is really good to try and strengthen that part of myself and work on being able to talk about things that I struggle with and not think of it as a sign of weakness. So I hope that this resonated with some of you. I hope that this allowed you some insight if it's not something that you personally struggle with, but you know someone who struggles with it. I'd love if we could keep this like a positive conversation and if anyone else has any tips, um, leave them down below. If there's someone in your life who's struggling with this, I'd love if you would share this video with them because suffering from any sort of chronic illness or pain can be super isolating and yeah, just knowing that there are other people out there who may not understand exactly what you're going through, but have a similar experience and perspective um, who can validate <laughs> that it is a struggle and it's a day-by-day -day thing. Um, so yeah, so that's all I have to say. I hope you guys, I don't know if enjoyed is the right word, but I hope you guys learned something from this and I will see you all Friday. Thanks guys for watching. Bye.